I discovered this launcher yesterday and I have been using it since then. So to begin with, on the home screen, you have uh, just not much of anything. You have a search bar on the bottom and you have on the top, you have a clock and um, like a battery, which just shows your battery percentage. And I quite like that because when my phone is really short on battery, it will, instead of giving me a goddamn number, it will change the number and the goddamn battery icon into a fucking exclamation mark, which is really frustrating. <laughs> Uh, but having an icon to home screen is not only more legible and more immediately visible than having to look at the status bar, it also means I actually see a number, uh, even when slow. So that's very convenient. And the clock is, again, nice to have more legibly, more clearly there on the home screen. Then on the left, so if you swipe to the right, you get to like a RSS feed page, so you can actually add in your own RSS feeds. It doesn't have anything by default, so you have to add them all. Uh, so you click on where the search like uh, bar is. You click there, and you can add in more. And then it will give you like an edit menu for the RSS feeds, so you can add in more with URLs. You can move them across and around, and uh, like with what on to be on the left and right because you navigate between them horizontally by swiping. So you can like arrange the order of them. You can also remove uh, the things. It took a bit to figure out, but basically you either swipe up or swipe down, I don't remember which, uh, and then you just keep going with that until it's get it gets removed. Uh, it has like an indicator for if you have swiped enough to do that. Then if you go back to the home screen, uh, you can swipe to the left instead, so to go to the right of the home screen, and you have a notes panel. This is really useful as a, like a to-do list type of thing. I have like an actual notes app that I use for notes, because it makes more sense to me. Uh, but this is really good for just like quick access to something and I'd like to do things here is perfect. For example, I have this video, like the fact that I want to make this, what I should include in it, so on in there. And again, like it's the same search bar like thing that you use to add in uh, new notes. And then you also have some options like heading, formatting, bold text, italics. So you have things like this that you can customize your notes with, which makes it really useful to format and customize and so on. Make the note a lot nicer. Then you can, from the home screen again, swipe down. And uh, at this point, you get to what's above the home screen, which is like a widget panel. So you have the clock widget and the battery one at the bottom. The clock one, you can also here like swipe and change to an analog clock instead of a digital one. But the numbers are quite big on it and it's not that legible. So I prefer the digital one. Then you also have like a media player, and uh, then we'll talk about it later. But uh, you also have above that, you have like your own widget, so you can click again where the search bar is. Everything is then through the search bar, which is really nice actually. Or like a button that's on the place of the search bar. It's a really fluid UX, but you can click on that, it will, it will like allow you to add in more widgets, your normal widgets, but it will add like nice backgrounds to them, so you can get a gray background that looks consistent if you if you're we just have a transparent background it's really nice uh, and uh, then you can uh, from the home screen again swipe up you get to go to below the home screen with the app drawer but it's not a normal one like the first view you'll see is the categories view so uh, you can see the categories so you have like folders basically and they're quite big there's like two columns and you have these big folders where you can organize your apps as you want to. And then you can also scroll horizontally uh, and uh, then you'll get to an all apps view. So you have an all apps menu, it's just not the default. And again, you can search for apps here as well as the home screen. But if you go there, you can do that. And it will also save that. So you have, when you scroll again down, if you're in the all apps view, then it will also keep you on the all apps view, which is quite nice. And uh, all of that UX is actually really nice. It looks really cool. It really, the UI really uses, like it really fits the material you design thing that Google is doing. It's really adapting that. It's taking really good use of the col material U colors and how it accents them and so on. And I know material U isn't everyone's thing, but the reality is Android is doing this. And if you do something else, it's going to look out of place uh, on from the rest of your system. So this, because it's following that so well, it actually really fits the overall system UI and it looks really modern and really like fitting. Uh, so I do actually quite like what they're doing with that. But there are some uh, limits 
because while the like actual UI operation, the all of this, the looks, it's all really fluid, it's really polished, it's really nice. There are some minor bugs. So on the search bar, you can go to settings and you can and you also have a voice assistant icon alongside those. And uh, the nice thing is with the settings, it's right there, you can use it easily. But the problem is you can set many things. For example, I don't have voice assistant on my phone. I tried getting like an open source voice assistant that isn't Google Assistant. I said it was my system one that it would like long press in the middle button and would go there, but the launcher still weren't detected. It wouldn't, it would skip saying no voice assistant, well, no voice assistant installed, no voice assistant available. It can't access the voice assistant if it's not like your Google one or whatever. So now I have this unusable button for voice there. Also, the notes have one at the top right, like a voice input icon. Once again, doesn't go damn work, doesn't do anything. And there's no option to remove this. It's just stuck there. And uh, then also there's the music player. Oh, this is a nightmare. Like, if you have it disabled, it just this text like, oh, you can enable this in settings. Yeah, I know. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to see this text saying it exists when I have disabled the goddamn thing. It's a nuisance. And then when I do enable it, it doesn't fucking work. Or like it works one time. Then if I close Spotify, it no longer works. Like I have to close, I have to go down. I have to close Spotify. I have to disable the go down thing. Then I have to open Spotify again. Then I have to enable the thing again to get it to show. And even then, it's only sometimes. And it usually takes like a minute or two to show up. So it's really not that good. <laughs> like. Why can I not, why is the thing show up if it's disabled? Just don't have the thing show up when it's disabled. It's like, I get they want the minimal and they don't want to give you customization. That's like the whole idea, but sometimes it gets in the way. Like the fact that you just like leave this empty box that does nothing useful to the say to me, oh, there's an option that you haven't enabled. I don't want to enable because the option doesn't fucking work. Uh, it's not useful. It's a waste of space. It's not minimal. It's the opposite of that. So that's one major criticism I have for the thing. The goddamn music player is... I mean, it's fine. It's not actually a huge issue, but it's quite frustrating that it's there like that. And uh, also, the... If I go to the app menu, I feel like the lack of customization is a problem there. For example, all the apps are just in alphabetical order. I can't rearrange them in the folders or anything. No, they are always alphabetical. So that's quite limiting. Also, I can't apply icon packs or like icons from icon packs to individual apps. I can only apply a general icon theme. So if some apps are not covered by that theme, then they are default and I can't do anything about it. Which is quite frustrating. Uh, because like, I would love to use a different icon pack, but it will look horribly ugly because I can't change the other icons to be anything other than default. And the default usually don't look that good with icon packs that I like to use. But... At the end of the day, it does what it needs to do, and it does it fairly well. You can't also really reach app info from the app menu, but it's why it is. But now I have actually complained quite about quite a lot of things, and I think the overall conclusion I make is it's great, actually. The UI is really good. Uh, it does have some annoyances. Uh, with this, it's mostly bug-free, but there's the music player thing, and there's also the... Also, like, another issue where, like, under some circumstances, if I go to the app in the categories and I click instead of the, uh, instead of the icon of the app, if I click on text next to it, or, like, somewhere outside of the icon on the spot, it will sometimes open a different app. And it will keep doing this for a period of time until it no longer does it anymore. And then it will actually open the app as it should. Uh, though, if I click on the icon, it will always work. The question is, I have no clue why this is, I have no clue what the reasoning is for this issue, but this seems to be a bug. It's not actually a big deal because I can easily build a habit that fixes that by hitting the icons of the app, but I have noticed this already in one day of use, so just one thing to note. So what can I say about this? Well, it's a really good launcher, it's really interesting, it has a truly great UX, the user experience, like mechanics the whole way it's designed it's really good the fact that it works so well also or like looks so good where it works is impressive it's really fluid it's really smooth it's really nice but it has some annoying bugs like the media player and the whole clicking off the icon thing which i don't know why 
uh, it's designed like that. Like, I want to disable the GoDaddy Media Player properly. I don't know why it has the GoDaddy text there. It serves no purpose. Uh, and there's just some overall, I think, my complaint with this lack of customization. The fact that it's stuck to have these useless, like, buttons that uses text that I cannot disable is frustrating. But that said, the defaults are pretty good. There's some annoyances, but it's really, where it works, it's really, really good. And I think I'll keep using this because it is a really good launcher. It is proprietary, so I can't even go and fix shit myself, but it's really good launcher.